real quick, let's back up to about six months ago. At that time, Gretel was still a goody-goody honor student. He got near-perfect marks on all his tests, and he excelled at everything he tried. He was always calm, composed, and confident. According to his teachers, he had an affable personality and knew how to win points with people. For better or for worse, his charm was magnetic. Mom, Dad, and I all cared about him very, very much. Gretel! Dad's on the phone! He's asking for you! Here! Thank you. Hello there, Gretel speaking. Yes. Yes. I'm doing well, thank you. Sister and I are making dinner at the moment. Yes, I'm fine. Sister's here to look out for me. You must be busy with work, right, Father? Don't worry about me. Everything's going smoothly. Right. Okay. Talk to you again. What did he say? Not much. He wanted to know if I was having any trouble, so I told him I wasn't. Sounds like the usual. Indeed. He frets over me so much, I'm starting to think he doesn't trust me. He just cares about you, Gretel. Right. Our parents were extremely busy people, but they always made time for phone calls or visits to see how Gretel was doing. Plus, they would buy him whatever he needed to live comfortably. In my eyes, they were doing everything they possibly could for him. And as for me... That reminds me. Could you help me with my homework, sister? Sure! I was willing to do anything if it would help him. I wanted him to have a happy life, so I always made sure to treat him with love and kindness. Was I coddling him? Probably. But he never once questioned it. And as far as I was concerned, it was having a positive effect on his life. So, then you take that and do this! Incredible! You're a better teacher than anyone at my school. I knew I was right to come to you. <laughs> I'm honored to be of service. Anything else you need help with? No, I should be all set now. You sure? Oh... If only I was at college with you, sister. I know it sucks being a year behind me, but that's just how the school system works. I know, but maybe I could graduate early or something. Sounds complicated, but I think you might be able to make it happen if you went to college abroad. Studying abroad? Well, that does sound nice. You must really hate community college, huh? I don't hate it, per se. It's just so dull, and everyone there is an idiot. It's beneath me. Admittedly, Gretel had a bit of a superiority complex. But it didn't really bother me. Gotcha. Well, if you make it into my university, we can go to the same school together. Then we can spend even more time with each other. Right. Just let me know if there's anything I can do for you, okay? I will. Thank you for all your help, sister. Our family was a little abnormal, sure, but in my opinion, we were doing just fine. I was sure it would last forever. Until the day it all came crashing down. What happened? On that fateful day, an incident occurred at Gretel's community college. The victim was a student at Gretel's school. And the perpetrator was Gretel. After school, the two of them got into a scuffle, and the other boy was injured so badly he needed stitches. Then a meeting was called to discuss Gretel's punishment. The result? Suspended for two weeks. Our parents decided to have Gretel temporarily isolated in order to undergo a psychological evaluation. <laughs> well, that's uh, not a good look. No! Let me go! Let me go! You're coming with me, Gretel. No! I don't want to go! Gretel! Sister, help me! Please, help me! 
Ryoshi confined Gretel to a separate, smaller house elsewhere. That's a little extreme. I mean, who started the fight? Was he defending himself? Um, what was the, the motivation of the fight? Like, you don't just isolate a person for starting a fight. <laughs> And like, we need to get you psychologically uh, looked at. Um, I don't know about this. Ryoshi can find Gretel to a separate, smaller house elsewhere. Ryoshi! Why would you lock him up? I was completely against it. I didn't see the need for any solitary confinement. I was sure Gretel could recover just fine at home. This is a necessary step for him. Please, let me see him! I'm afraid not. Right now, he needs time to cool off. Relax, alright. He has everything he needs. Much like I do right now. No matter how I pleaded, Ryoshi refused to listen. I wanted to get a look at Gretel's living arrangement for myself, but Ryoshi refused to let me inside. There was nothing I could do. Gretel had asked me to help him, yet I couldn't. When I finally saw Gretel again one week later, he was completely emaciated. What? Is it the same? Okay, this room is like mirrored of the one we're in now. All the mirroring. For the first few days of isolation, he had refused to eat or drink anything. Gretel, is there anything you need? Anything I can do for you? No. Not in particular. Gretel. Don't cry, okay? I'm here for you. Sister. I wanted to console him, to put a smile back on his face. I'll protect you, I promise. After that, Gretel was released from his confinement, and I hovered over him more than ever before. Once his two-week suspension came to an end, I walked him to and from school each day and reduced his responsibilities as much as possible. Fortunately, he returned home in high spirits, and we went back to life as usual. On the surface, anyway. But his relationship with Ryoshi had soured even further to the point that simply being in the same room was enough to ruin Gretel's mood. I mean, I honestly can't really blame him, though. There's a big chunk of this story we've not seen. One other thing had changed, too. He had stopped asking me for help with anything. Well, you abandoned him, didn't you? When he really needed you, where were you? At last, I understood. This wasn't just any cabin. It was Gretel's isolation cell. Really? Okay, that is that's interesting. That is interesting, to be sure. He moved some things around a little bit. But he recreated it. Why? I should have realized it sooner. Why didn't I realize it sooner? Are you awake? You were out for a long time. Through my hazy vision, I could see Gretel standing there, holding a bright white plate. I had this dream. You were there, and I... Gretel pressed his index finger to my lips. At his prompting, I fell silent. Once he confirmed that I was done talking, he sat down on the bed and started cutting up the pancake on his plate. Here you are. Then he stabbed a fork full of it and held it up to my mouth. Eat the pancake? Yes! Sleepily, I opened my mouth and took the bite. Good girl. He stroked my hair. Then he gently fed me another bite. And another, and another. 
Almost like he was nursing a battered baby bird back to health. After I finished my food, Gretel cleared away the dirty dishes. I sat up and looked out the window. Or tried to, but the curtains were drawn. Hey, Gretel? What is it, sister? Why did you kiss me that one time? What one time? You know, when I was resting my head in your lap. Oh, that. Well. He fell silent for a moment, then pulled me into a hug. Not going to stop me. Why would I? I'm not opposed to it. Despite the circumstances, I was still receiving a hug from my crush. Then he drew his lips to my ear and whispered, Are you enjoying being in my arms? Are you enjoying this hug? Um... Okay, I feel like we've taken a turn. Maybe halfway point. Um, at this point, um, accessing memories from a while ago. This is, we're doing like, yes, I think, I think I see it. I think I see the connection. I'm pretty sure by this point we're supposed to be like, I do have feelings for you. So now we do, like, the affectionate things of hugging and stuff, while still drawing lines in the sand. I don't think this is a, a line in the sand moment, so... Yes? Yeah. Pervert. <laughs> <laughs> I accidentally sprayed spit onto Gretel's face. Worth it. Gross. <laughs> Me? P pervert I was so flustered, I couldn't even form a coherent sentence. You're enjoying a hug from your little brother, you sicko. Frankly, I'm impressed you can enjoy anything right now, given the circumstances. You started it! My voice escalated to a scream. I wanted to push him away, but he refused to budge. So instead I flailed my legs, but he just pinned them down with his own. Yes, that's right. Nearly forgot I'm the one who locked you in here to begin with. Which makes me the pervert. <laughs> he let out an affable chuckle, but this was no laughing matter. That said. Suddenly, he lowered his voice. I guess it doesn't matter, since we're just two strangers who aren't related in the slightest. I froze, eyes wide. So you knew! Aha! I couldn't speak. My lips trembled, but no words came. It felt like his icy gaze had turned me to stone. A long moment passed as we gazed into each other's eyes. Then, at last, I found my voice. You knew. Of course I did. His tone was casual. Oh, and I'm aware that you have feelings for me, too. Romantic feelings, I mean. Oh, Joy! Did you find a journal? All Toma style? <laughs> I turned and dove under the blanket, pulling it up over my head. <laughs> but Gretel yanked it right back off me. Look at me, sister. I curled into a ball and shook my head. Why not? I... I'm sorry. For what? Come to think of it, maybe it was silly to apologize. If anything, he should apologize to me! But my apology was a gut reaction. Look at me, please. I can't, I answered in a tiny voice. Come on, let me see my sister's pretty face. He spoke softly, like he was consoling a child. Look at me. 
This time he spoke sharply, commanding me, but I still refused. Leave me alone. He grabbed my shoulders and turned me in his direction. Then he cupped my chin and tilted my face up. Whoa, man. This... Oof. Sorry. This angle... I might even put it on screen. But this angle of the CG is, like, almost identical to... I think it's the first CG you get of Toma in Toma's Root and Amnesia. And it just, like, hit me like a ton of bricks. Like, whoa! That was pretty wild, actually. You want to know why I kissed you? Because you're special to me, sister. I wanted to reward you with something you'd like. And since I knew you had feelings for me, I figured you'd like a kiss. When you said I was special to you, you met romantically. You've always been terrible at hiding things. Or were you being obvious on purpose? That's something that always frustrated me about you. As much as I love and respect who you are, I can't stand that side of you. You're normally so quick to read between the lines. How could you not notice this one thing? I thought about letting myself fall for you too, you know. No. Truth be told, I already had. I love you, sister. If I wanted to, I could kiss you. Hell, I could have sex with you. <gasps> I let out a small shriek as he cupped my breasts over my clothes. Oh! Oh dear. Stop calling me sister, please! It's just... Uh, it gives me the icks. It gives me the icks. Just stop. Ugh! <laughs> Why do you continue with the facade? I love you, sister. I'm madly in love with you. We could date if we wanted. No one would judge us. No one would rebuke us. After all, it's not like we're actually related. But we still can't. It's forbidden. You know that, right, sister? I felt a drop of liquid hit my cheek. And when I opened my eyes, I found Gretel above me, crying. Sister... I don't want you to abandon me. Please. Anyone but you. <sighs> I... I just need a moment. I just need to, like, recenter myself. <laughs> I'm like, okay. It's I mean, we're we're slowly chip 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 chipping away at this. Very slowly, but we're we're getting there. I do feel it's progressing at a decent rate. I'm just impatient to like find out all the situation regarding this so that I can be like, okay, this is how I feel. Cause right now I'm still actually kind of torn. I feel bad for him now knowing what he went through with Ryoshi and stuff. Because we don't, we still don't fully know the circumstances around that. And he didn't actually kill anybody. But there's like concern about, I guess he kind of went crazy on this person. The person needed stitches, whatever. But we still don't know the situation. But I can see he felt abandoned by Eureka. And Obviously, that isolation did not do him any good. So, well done, Ryoshi. You hecked up now in two roots now, so I hope you're proud of yourself. But, oh gosh, I'm just... Yeah. Anyway, I'm dealing with a lot, but we'll, we'll continue. If I want to actually figure out what, what's happening, I need to actually keep going. <laughs> Instead of being like, Ah, I need a moment! Every five seconds. So let's just keep going. <sighs> I let out my 24th sigh of the day. Hello, I miss you. What? What's wrong, dude? You're sighing like crazy. It's not like you. 
What happened to the goofy girl we all know and love? Wolf shook my shoulders, derailing my train of thought. Wait. Now that I think about it, it's weird that you're still here. Aren't you going to go pick up Gretel? I decided I'm not going to do that anymore. Whoa. His eyes widened as he murmured in surprise. I paused my contemplation and decided to have Wolf answer a question on behalf of the entire male gender. Oh, this ought to be good. Do guys kiss girls they aren't interested in? All the time! He grinned from ear to ear. I figured. Okay, then. I didn't feel like making any catty quips, so I let it go. He didn't represent all men, just the horny wolves. Thus, it was a mistake to ask him in the first place. <laughs> ah -hoo! I mean, he, he do be right, though. After Wolf and I went our separate ways, I thought long and hard about last night. Why did Gretel do that? Last night, while I was resting my head in his lap, he leaned down and kissed me. But what did it mean? Then again, he just gave me a little peck on my eyelids at most. Any family member would do that. The thought made my heart ache, and I abruptly stopped and crouched down into a ball right where I was. Do family members kiss each other's foreheads? Maybe in other countries? No, surely there's no way this could be taken as a platonic kiss anywhere in the world. Even between family. Personally, I couldn't see myself kissing anyone except someone I was in love with. Ah. <sighs> But just as I hit sigh number 25... Hey, lady. <laughs> it was the gang of delinquent boys from yesterday. The way they sneered at me set me on edge. Can I help you? I rose to my feet and looked around. School was out for the day, and there were plenty of students around. Confident that they wouldn't try to pull anything, I donned a smile. We want to talk to you about your brother. Could you come with us? Sorry, but I'm busy. As I tried to walk past them, however, one of them grabbed me by the arm. Trust me, this won't take long. It was the leader guy I had messed with. Stop. I scowled at him in disgust. Keep this up and I'll make a scene. Go ahead if you want, but I can't guarantee he'll be safe if you do. He who? Your brother. Oh, wait, I guess he's not actually your brother, huh? What did you do to him? I yanked my arm out of his grasp. Oh, not much. Right, guys? They all exchanged a glance. What did you do? I repeated myself more firmly this time as I stared directly into their eyes. I'm sure you figured it out by now, but we've got a little bone to pick with him. So we called him out to teach him a lesson. And after a few hits, he started crying and calling your name. <laughs> Our friends are showing him a real good time right about now. See? Here's the proof. On the small rectangular phone screen, I could see a guy who looked like Gretel getting kicked in the gut. It was dark, and I couldn't get a good look at his face, but he appeared to be tied to a tree. Each time they kicked him, he let out a painful groan and shouted, Sister! So he's in a forest? The closest forest is by the lake. At this, one of the boys sent a startled look my way, and I took this to mean I was right. Someone guff! Right as I started to shout, however, I heard the crackle of electricity and a sharp pain rush along my spine. Pipe down now. We don't want to have to drag you there by force. Then someone moved around behind me and pressed something hard against my back. My whole body broke out in a cold sweat as my heart pounded in my chest. But I kept a straight face to conceal my internal panic. What are you planning to do with me once we get there? Oh, nothing. Just thought you'd want to go fetch your precious baby brother. Isn't that right, sister? I'm not your sister. You're not his either. 
He knows everything, you know. He knows you're not his real sister or even his stepsister. You're just strangers. So what? The icy sneer fell from his face and he raised his eyebrows. Evidently, he wasn't expecting me to be so unruffled. Meanwhile, I was debating whether to start shouting again. As I looked around, I made eye contact with several passers-by on the street, but the delinquents glared at them until they left. This was very clearly a trap. But I couldn't just let these thugs beat Gretel black and blue. Fine. I'll go with you. Now where are we going? I had a bad feeling about this, but I didn't have a choice. Now that I had agreed, one of them grabbed me by the arm again. Relax. I don't need you to escort me. I'm not going anywhere. As I shook them off, someone let out a whistle. Just then, my cell phone started to ring inside my book bag. Someone shoved me from behind and I stumbled forward. Then the leader took my phone out of my bag and powered it off. Gonna have to confiscate this. As I walked, I began to drop the items from my bag one by one, being as quiet as possible so they wouldn't notice. A trail of breadcrumbs, eh? It was a risky move, but this way, if something happened to me, perhaps someone could follow the trail to my location. I like it. I like it. The delinquents brought me to a deserted part of the forest. The sun had already set, and the branches blocked out any remaining light until I could scarcely walk without a flashlight. My brain was screaming at me not to go any further, but with my captors on all sides, I was boxed in. Besides, I couldn't leave until I made sure Gretel was still alive. I came to an abrupt stop, and the guy behind me crashed into me. Where is he? To answer me, the boys all pointed their flashlights at the base of one particular tree. There, someone who looked like Gretel was tied to the tree, just as I'd seen in the video. He appeared to be unconscious. Are you okay? I dashed up to him and peered into his face. And that was when I discovered that he wasn't Gretel at all. This was a trap. Oh, hello music. I tried to bolt, but someone grabbed me and tried to put me in a full Ness Nelson. Summoning all of my strength, I pushed him away as hard as I could. I attempted to use this window of opportunity to get away, but then Gretel stood up and grabbed my arm. No! Desperate to break free, I used my other hand to punch him, but the other guy, the one I shoved, yanked my hair and slammed me to the ground. Ugh! The sharp pain made me grunt. But I had no time to lose. Enduring the pain, I tried to get up, only to get the wind knocked out of me as someone kicked me in the gut. Gah! Unable to bear it, I collapsed face down on the ground. Then someone yanked me up by the hair, raising my head. Settle the fuck down! With a sadistic grin, the boy slapped me across the face. The sharp impact across my cheek knocked me back to the ground. Fear had taken over my mind. I started to tremble. For the first time, I realized... I'm going to die. SOMEONE HELP ME! I screamed as loud as I could, but my body was shaking too hard to produce much of a sound. Their laughter echoed through the forest. I tried to crawl away from them on my hands and knees. Whoa there, not so fast. Ah! He grabbed me by the collar and flung me onto my back. Then someone shone a flashlight into my eyes, blinding me. Stop! But my desperate plea only seemed to further fuel their sadistic desires because things started to escalate. I tried to back away, but the leader straddled my legs, pinning me in place. Stop it, you asshole! He tried to pin my arms down, so I dug my nails in, but he quickly pinned my wrists together with one hand. Next, he reached for my mouth. I bit his hand as hard as I could. Fear was telling me that if I didn't fight back, they were going to make me wish I was dead. Ouch! You bitch! 
Sparks flew behind my eyelids. The leader had grabbed me by the collar and punched me in the face. Ow. I felt a warm liquid trickling out of my nose and realized I was bleeding. My vision pitched sideways and my consciousness started to fade, but I bit my lip and used the pain to keep myself awake. The taste of copper spread inside my mouth. You sure had fun humiliating me yesterday, didn't you? <laughs> the leader reached a hand under my top. I wanted to scream but could only manage a groan. I tried to resist by flailing my limbs, but he was far stronger than I was. At this point, there was nothing else I could do. No matter what cunning plot I came up with, I couldn't put it into action. Goosebumps pricked up my arms as his warm breath brushed my neck. I could see his brightly dyed hair bobbing up and down. I closed my eyes and tried my best to shut out reality. Freeze! Police! All of a sudden, a voice rang out. I opened my eyes and squinted against the blinding bright light. Ugh! Let's get out of here! At his command, he and the rest of his gang took off running. Are you all right? The owner of the voice came running over to me, bringing his light with him. Who? I thought it would be you, but I'm like, you're not with the police! Wait! <laughs> you're also not wearing your police uniform still! <laughs> Are you still pretending to be with the police? Oh my, I don't care. I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> oh, Red, thank you. It's me, Red Riding Hood. Red. As I sat up, I could feel aches and pains all over my body. I missed you. <laughs> Red crouched down and put a hand on my shoulder for support. Unlike these delinquents, his touch didn't trigger visceral disgust. Are you hurt? He took one look at my face and stared wide-eyed. This is serious. Let's get you to a hospital right away. Can you stand? Hanging my head, I reached out and clutched at his riding hood. Miss Odyssey. My body was still shaking. After a brief moment of hesitation, he gently put his hand on mine. Don't worry. They're gone now. I'll protect you, no matter what. <laughs> The nightmare was over, and I was saved. The dam burst, and tears poured down my face. <laughs> Panic time! Please, don't cry! F for now, we should... We should get you something to wear. I know! Take this! <laughs> he pulled off his riding hood and put it on me. Thank you. My vision was now blocked out with scarlet, but I could still feel his arm around me. What a sweetie.